Hello, and welcome to Quick Charge by Electrek. I'm Mikey G, and it's Saturday, November 12th. Fair amount to cover for Tesla today. They announced that they are opening their electric car charge connector in the hope of making it a new standard in North America. When Tesla started making electric cars many years ago, there was no dominant charging standard, but as of now, the CCS connector has been established almost globally. Most experts agree that Tesla's connector is more efficient and an elegant design, but it would be hard to make it the standard because Tesla is behind it and the auto industry is quite competitive. But now, Tesla has announced that they are opening its connector to the entire industry and has published their design and specs online for anyone to access. Tesla is also renaming the Tesla connector to be called the North American Charging Standard, or NACS. Sounds like a very optimistic name change. Virtually every other automaker producing electric cars for the North American market is currently delivering them with the CCS connector. There is one exception, and that is Aptera. Actually, Aptera went so far as to start an internet petition to have the Tesla connector made standard in the USA. And we all know how far internet petitions go. Tesla clearly has made an effort and concessions in their electric car charging, as the stations that Tesla has made already is in the process of accepting non-Tesla vehicles with the CCS plugs. With the opening of Tesla's proprietary connector, Tesla has confirmed that its supercharger is a lot more powerful than we previously thought. In the documentation, Tesla describes two versions of its charging technology capable at operating at 500 volts and 1000 volts, but they are inoperable at the moment. The capacity to operate at 1000 volts is new information that wasn't known about Tesla's charging capacity before, other than the upcoming megawatt charging for the Tesla semi-truck. Furthermore, Tesla noted in the documentation that it has been able to operate at over 900 amps. Combine that together and that would be more than three times the current stated capacity of Tesla's most recent supercharger stations. And this would also mean that the CCS connector would be operating at about half that of the total capacity of the Tesla connector, or rather the North American charging standard connector. <laughs> it's going to take a while to get used to. What's interesting is that the connector made by Tesla is far more powerful than passenger cars are ready to accept from Tesla, at least for the time being. Hyundai actually has made strides in lowering charge time by designing their battery pack to use high voltage. Tesla has yet to make a similar move, but nevertheless, their chargers are ready. Tesla is starting the rollout of its full self-driving version 11 update, which is supposed to be the wider release to anyone who bought the full self-driving package in North America. We don't have access to the release notes quite yet, but again, the main new feature is expected to be the merger of the two software stacks, going from using the system on the freeway to using the system on city streets. This is both exciting and scary, like sending your kid off to school for the first time. Several groups and individuals have expressed concerns over the name of the product and the potential for harm it could cause to those trying to use it. Despite the name, full self-driving, drivers must still be vigilant and ready to control the vehicle at all times. It bears repeating, as even the most deserving of accidents could tarnish the program entirely. According to a thin report from Reuters, Tesla is planning to start importing electric cars made in the China to the U.S. market. The move wouldn't make too much sense if the report were true. As a matter of fact, Elon Musk was quick to publicly deny the claim via Twitter. For what it's worth, the Reuters report came from two people with knowledge of planning and they were not named. Now, of course, confidential sources are not a new phenomenon in the U.S., going on for well over 100 years by now, but there is no other clues or motives leading to this conclusion. While it is true that the China factory has become Tesla's main export hub, they have been exporting and supplying to markets that don't have existing full production. We've already seen the German market start to feel the effects of Tesla having local production instead of relying on some from China. Aside from that, Tesla and any other automaker are highly incentivized to make electric cars here in the States instead of exporting, thanks to the impending tax credits. Regarding Tesla's USA production, Tesla has been and progressively building capacity for quite some time. It would take a very cheap Chinese vehicle to overcome all of that, and also the public image costs that Tesla would incur. Ahead of the start of deliveries, Tesla is starting to integrate the Tesla Semi into its mobile app, which is the main way that owners interact with their vehicles. It looks like owners of the commercial vehicles are going to start enjoying similar experiences as Tesla passenger vehicle owners. 
In the app, we can see it actually has a nice picture of the front trunk and a very wide sun visor. At least that's some new information that we got, but not too much else at the moment. Critics of Elon Musk's new Twitter policy about parody accounts have forced the CEO to change the policy, and then he wound up banning them. I won't regale you with the entire story of Elon Musk and Twitter, but only how it affects Tesla. Someone critical of the verified account policy made a phony Tesla account, got it verified, and then began making misleading tweets about Tesla, presumably in jest. It got Elon Musk's attention to the point where he said anyone with a fake account must have a classifying word in their name, such as the word parody. The fake account was banned shortly thereafter. When buying Twitter, Elon Musk announced that you can now have fun on social media platforms again. But I don't think this is what he meant. Tesla's stock seems to be stabilizing after it took a dive following Elon Musk's sale of stock for the acquisition of Twitter. Hopefully, it bounces back and continues to climb to the moon. Polestar recorded its first profit since going public in the third quarter of the year, as the Swedish EV maker builds momentum heading into the end of 2022. Strategic cost-cutting measures and rising demand push Polestar into positive earnings territory as the company eyes 50,000 deliveries by the year's end. In April, the Hertz rental car company expanded its EV fleet and ordered up to 65,000 Polestars, a hefty order that is a bit over double their total 2021 deliveries. In October, Polestar reported a total of 30,424 deliveries for the year so far, with around 9,215 being delivered. During the 2022 year, Polestar achieved a revenue of $1.4 billion on 30,000 deliveries in the first nine months. Polestar reported its first quarterly profit as a public company of $299.4 million. Polestar plans to rapidly expand its EV portfolio with the Polestar 4, a sports SUV, which is expected in 2023. After that, we'll have the Polestar 5 Sports GT in 2024, and then the Polestar 6 Roadster in 2026. EV startup Canoe has seemed to have overcome a fair amount of adversity this year. After barely skidding by in the first quarter, taking an over $125 million loss and expressing significant doubt that they could continue, Canoe is now on its way to begin commercial production of its flagship vehicle, the Lifestyle Delivery Vehicle, called LDV. According to Canoe's latest quarterly earnings, the company is now on track of the start of production on November 17, 2022. This is after orders doubled to over $750 million binding. They report that Walmart completed an initial order for 4,500 units, Zeba, a fleet solutions provider, ordered 5,500, and 3,000 under a binding agreement. And also, another company called Kingbee committed to buying 9,300 units with the option of 18,600 after that. Canoe's announcement to begin EV production comes after securing access to new funding and manufacturing facilities. Canoe has chosen a facility in Oklahoma City to begin full vehicle assembly. Okay, it is announcement time. Next week, I'm going to be at the LA Auto Show starting on Tuesday until about Friday. I'm going to be there with a fair amount of the Electrek crew, so it's kind of exciting. I'll be checking out some new awesomeness, particularly from Hyundai. But as a result of this, there will not be as many episodes of Quick Charge during the week. When I am available, I'll be sneaking off to the hotel room to scratch together an episode of Quick Charge. Also coming next week on the other Electrek channel are a string of shorts videos, you know, the vertical shorts videos with EV tips that I've made, and also a full-scale edit of a video with Scooter Doll and the new Hyundai Ioniq 6. By the way, Monday's episode of Quick Charge is still on, so I will see you then. Thanks for watching Quick Charge. I'm Mikey G, and I hope you have a great day. <laughs>